you know, the, this night meant to you, and also just, just the support that you got from the fans who lined up, I understand, from 7 o'clock in the morning, so on. Oh, really? That, I mean, that just blows me away. I mean, that's, that's great, you know. Um, it's, it's an honor to get there, to, to be, you know, um, put in this walk of fame. I mean, we don't have that in England. We don't have Hall of Fame, Walk of Fame, you know, Wall of Fame. Although someone just told me they've just started one now, but um, so um, I, you know, it's, it's an honour for us. It's nice to get recognition. We've been working in this country, doing a lot of tours and, and playing a lot of concerts for quite a few years. So uh, it's nice to get a little bit of good recognition. Yeah, it's, it's great. And Dave, uh, yeah, it's the same thing. It's just a, a very unique um, situation. You know, the way it's presented and hands in the cement and stuff and it just so you're leaving kind of a legacy really and it's for, you know for your children you know your children's children you know let's go and see the grandparents' handprints and up in you know in los angeles on, on the boulevard so that's it's just a nice thing so i think really maybe in 10 years time 15 20 years time is really where it's really going to make its imprint you know no pun intended <laughs> but um it, it's just yeah i mean it hit it's it gets you here and, and seeing the, the fans outside today and a lot of the young kids out there are singing along to the music it's just uh, it's just a whole ambience of it. it was a very nice it's a, a great evening you know, it felt like kind of you know we're on doing a show we were playing music <laughs> so it's kind of like the flip side of everything we normally do this is completely turned everything around so it's a it's a wonderful honor yeah, you're just about to end your stay in, in the U.S., so uh, it, it, it's really a nice send-off, isn't it? Absolutely, Actually, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a beautiful really send-off, nice. yeah. 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 How, how has OzFest been for you uh, guys? Um, you know, we, we've, we've heard great things, obviously haven't played out here yet. It's been great, you know. We've, uh, we've told, we've, I think the key thing for us is we've probably played to uh, audiences we wouldn't have normally played to, you know. Um, just uh, you know, a lot of different people. I mean, we normally headline. We haven't opened up for anyone for for quite a few years. But uh, because it was Aussie and it was Sabbath, you know, we grew up listening to those guys, and uh, it's a big honour, you know. So um, it's worked out great all the way around, really. We've had a good time. We uh, we only get to play an hour, which is a bit of a drag. But uh, in that hour, you can just you know just go for it and. Uh, uh, you know, we we go on with we have no we don't have the usual effect stage show. It's pretty much back to basics, mm -hmm. and that kind of ties in with the material we're playing, which is uh, drawn from the first four albums we ever did. Which is it's kind of raw, you know. Why did uh, you decide to do that to go back to the, the, the first four? Well, we had like there's a DVD like the early years, and basically we, it's kind of based around the first four albums. This particular uh, tour is. And in fact, when we were playing in Europe, we'd do like an hour and fifty minutes. So obviously, we cut it down for this show. But basically, it's kind of you know we're touring off. This is the, the old material, and we're probably never play this stuff again. So it's a case where well, we, we've documented this tour, we've videoed this tour, especially in in Europe. And um, and basically, you know, saying right, we're letting go of those songs, and we probably won't be playing any of those, you know, ever again. And that's kind of a chapter in Iron Maiden's life that's probably and it's over. We probably still play a couple of very old favourites, but just one or two. And then basically, we'll set up for, you know, we're going to make a new album next year. So really, it's you know, it's letting go of that part of our past, and then continuing with the future, you know. Yeah. As as the band's kind of original guitar. Duo, which is now a, now a trio. Um, how did you guys get started on the instrument? Were your guitar center and you know? Well, no, we didn't quite have these. Someone just said to me, you know, these this <laughs> a shop like this, we, you know, it was just incredible to us. You know, um, any way you can, you know, you just you just get by on raw, you know, enthusiasm uh, mm -hmm. for what you're doing. You know, yeah. it, was, it was like cheap and cheerful. You know, so you'd be pressing your nose up against the. You know the window pane of these these shops in Shaftesbury Avenue in West London, where all the shops yeah. were lined up. So you'd be you'd be looking in there, and hopefully one day, you know. But basically, you know, we started off with like a, a kind of Woolworths type plastic type of guitar, and then just, you know, we moved up. But I think as well back then it was so like a lot of the music. You had to be more of a detective now because of the internet. Everything's you can get everything now, you know, too quick. But back then you had to be a bit more of a detective hunt down exactly what you wanted on stuff and it wasn't there wasn't that much there was lots of stuff out there but you know not the vast array there is today mm. so it was pretty easy back then to pick okay I want that guitar I want that amp and I like this a couple of these guitar players right and then you kind of get on with it whereas mm. now you've got a choice of 
which is good, which is absolutely very healthy, and it's good, but it's... Um, Sport it's, for choice, really. You've got yeah. so much to choose from. Amps, guitars, you know, yeah. all good prices. So, yeah. but so that's basically, pretty healthy. Yeah, it's just being driven by enthusiasm and, and, and love for playing music and, and what started off as a hobby turned into a professional career. So it's something, you know, it wouldn't change anything in the past at all. No. You know. Do you choose your yeah. favourite guitar on stage, or is it at home, in a, you know, in a case or something? <laughs> Um, I have one guitar, which is the first Les Paul I ever bought. It was a gold top Les Paul. I bought it when I was about, uh, God, probably 18 or 19. And I, I, I took a summer job and I saved up enough money to buy it. And um, now it's, uh, I wouldn't bring it out on the road. But um, apart from that, I, use, I have a lot of guitars, but I use most of them, you know. Uh, yeah, they get used on on the road. They like working guitars, so you can take them out and, and you know the custom fenders, and they're you know they can take the stamina. You know, you get beaten up a bit, and they they hold together really well. You know, but obviously, like I used to say, you know, we're collecting guitars over the years, and especially in the eighties and, and in America. So we've got a lot of old classic guitars that are sitting at home and and you know in the closet. But it's it's but you take them out and you remember that that year they've still got the receipts in there and you remember that tour that year so it's like buying a, an antique piece of furniture and see it you know it's right because of the wooden year it was built and and there's a certain beauty about it but for me using the the newer made guitars are, are perfect for touring right now because they can and you don't mind if they get beaten around a bit because they're new you know the, but the older ones are more fragile and you want to keep them in a in a nice safe haven. <laughs> So when is, when is the band going to actually record a studio album again? What, what, what are the, what's the plan for that? I think uh, I think we plan to go in the studio. We, we're finishing this tour uh, in a couple of weeks, and then we're going to take some time off. And early next year, we'll start writing. I'll probably be in the studio <coughs> sort of uh, around March time, and hopefully get it done and get out on the road again by by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see Maiden will be out on the road next year, but it'll be late next year, and it will be with a new album. And that's we kind of got a game plan. That's well, actually, yeah, it's always it's always been that way. Actually, I think you know, always thinking like you know, two years ahead <laughs> almost. You know exactly what you're going to be doing. <laughs> you know, you can you can actually mark in your diary pretty much down to the week. <laughs> you know what's going to be happening. You're about to yeah. leave Ozfest to do some European dates. What, what, Velvet Revolver is kind of taking Maiden's slot. What would you, what would you tell those guys uh, <laughs> <laughs> as they... Hey, they're going to do great, aren't they? I mean, you know, they're a great band and I think that, you know, the audience are playing to, it's, it's right up there their Straza, so I think they're going to have a wonderful reception. I think the, the Ozfest in general just generates a great atmosphere, so I think you know the bands that go on early in the day are getting a great reaction, so it's a thing that just channels through the whole day. There's a nice good sense of that euphoria there, so but Velvet are going to have a blast and um, they're going to, you know, and I'm sure they're probably similar to us, they're probably going to be playing to an audience that have never seen them before. And that's been the case with us, and, you know, so the, the only good could come out of it for them, you know, and I think for the whole event, you know, so good luck to them. Yeah. This, this band has obviously been very, very resilient. Uh, folks have left and come back, and <laughs> now, you're kind of, uh, <laughs> now you're kind of all back together again. Uh, mm. You know, what, what is it about this band that has kind of brought, brought you all back? I think... Um I think the band has always uh, hasn't strayed too far from its sort of roots, and the fans respect that, and the fans have stayed with us. I think it's why the band's been around such a long time, you know. And uh, personally, for me, it was great to come back and, and do it again, you know. And uh, you know, for me, it's even better the second time around. I mean, you know, enjoying it as much, if not more, as, as ever. And the fans are the constant thing; they're just great. And we seem to be picking up new fans all the time. I mean, in here in America, especially in Europe as well, we get a lot of young fans, so it's really vibrant in in a uh, healthy scene at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the combination, like the music as well. I think everything from, you know, the the substance in the music and the kind of depth of it, you know, the lyrics, the, the melodies. Plus, you know, you've got like the Eddie character as well, and and it's like attention to detail. There's a lot of things going on around each album, each tour. So there's a lot of stuff to, you know 
for, for the fans to get their teeth into. And um, and but ultimately, though, this is the way Maiden should fin you know should, uh, should carry on now. And finish is with this lineup, and it was you know in a way fate and destiny. You know, you go down this road, things change. You know. Uh, nothing's really constant, but you know, different moves have been made within this band throughout the, the years for certain reasons. But this is exactly how it's supposed to finish, and uh, you know, and I say doing this today really just you know is the icing on the cake. You know. mm. All right, that's it, Dan, for Tillis wrap up. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Right. Thank, thank you. Good night. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> what was that? <Cheers>. <laughs> cheers. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Cheers. Man.